Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. A friend of mine told me about this great collection of digital assets that Shutterstock is giving away. It includes transitions, light leaks, uh, animated graphics, lookup tables. It's quite a collection and uh, you can download it for free and use them all royalty free in your projects. I included a link below in the info section. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to use them in Final Cut Pro 10. After you download the assets for Shutterstock, you're gonna to wanna to import them into a library. Now I've created a library called Shutterstock here and created an event called Toolkit. Now inside the Toolkit are a number of different keyword collections. And by the way, these keyword collections were created by simply dragging the folders from the Toolkit straight into the event. You can see there's just a ton of content here. For example, uh, I'll just start here at the top. There's a bunch of 4K light leaks so if you have 4K projects, there's a number of different uh, animated light leaks you can use. Um, there's uh, some particle effects, some dust. There's some HD content if you're working with just HD material. There's a whole category of icons. There's just, uh, animated arrows, animated graphics, just tons of uh, really useful stuff in here. There's another category of light leaks. Um, there's some shapes. So if you wanna build some titles or lower thirds, they've got a bunch of uh, shape elements in here. And as I skim over them, you can see um, there's diamonds and ovals and squares and lines, and you can do a lot with these things. And then this category of transitions. Now I find these to be really useful. There's some really nice animated transitions here that are basically black and white. And I'm gonna show you how to use them as transitions in a moment. And lastly, there's a category of volumetric light. And I think these are beautiful. And the fact that you get these for free are amazing because you can create some amazing title backgrounds for these. And I'll do that for you a little bit later. Okay, so I have a, a timeline here of a bunch of clips and I'm gonna start with transitions. And I already have one transition. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a transition from, let's say, let's see, um, yeah, that's an interesting one. Okay, so you don't apply transitions the way you would normally think to apply them in Funnel Cut. In other words, you don't add them at a, as a cut point. What you're gonna wanna do is move that, move your play to the end of the clip that you, the outgoing clip that you want the transition on, and then select the transition and press Shift Q, which does a back timed edit. So that back times that, that clip right to the end of your outgoing animated clip. So I'm gonna select that little animation and then press Command-4 to open the inspector. And under the compositing mode, under blend mode, I wanna set this to Silhouette Luma. It's gonna use a white and black pixels to create the transparency. So here, as you can see, right away, I have the clip showing through the white portions of the mat. Now, I wanted to transition to this clip, but in order to do that, what I need to do is drag it out of the primary store line and align it with the beginning of that transition right there. So now it's sitting on top. And you wanna make sure you set this for behind. Okay, the reason is if it's, if it's set for normal, you won't see it. So what you're doing is sending that clip behind the bottom two clips in the stack. So now if I play this, you'll see I have this nice little transition here. And then I can replace it with another one. Let's try, let's try this one. Drag that, drag that right on top of that one, and I'll choose replace from start. And of course I need to change the composite mode on this. I'll go back to blend mode and I'll choose silhouette Luma. And now um, I've got a completely different looking transition. And one of the ways you can alter this is that if you don't want such hard edge on the transition, you can soften it by opening up the effects browser. I'm gonna go into blurs and I'm gonna just grab a Gaussian blur and throw it on the transition. And as you can see, it now has a soft edge. And so when I um, select the transition and adjust the amount, I can, I can essentially feather the edge of the transition so it's not as harsh and get this totally different look. So you have a number of different Luma transitions you can play with. The next thing I wanna play with is something called light leaks. And I wanna use a light leak as a transition. 
So I'm gonna select light leaks here, and there's just a, a bunch of really great light leaks in here that you can use. Some are shorter, some are longer, and they make really good transition elements. So what I'm gonna do is grab this 01 blue transition and move it over the top. I wanna to have it straddle the outgoing clip and the incoming clip, so it's right there centered over the cut point. And see, there's the light leak, and so, how do I create the transparency? Well, I use another composite mode. The clip is selected. I go over to the composite mode, and this time I'm gonna choose screen, which will punch out all of the dark pixels and allow the video to show through. So now I've got this really nice light leak transition. Okay, there's also some longer light leaks. I have this um, shot of my editor, Travis's wife, and his uh, little girl here. And I wanna create this really nice, almost, almost a uh, flashback kind of a feel. And you see that quite often on a lot of uh, YouTube videos. And um, I'm gonna use this little, this warm one here. Let's constrain the length of this by selecting this clip and pressing X, and then selecting the clip and pressing Q and that constrains it as a three-point edit. And now, um, what I wanna do is add a composite mode by selecting clip, going back over to blend, and this time I'll do, yeah, I'll do screen again, and I got this nice light leak here. There it goes, this nice little, it's like this has this warm, almost nostalgic feel to it. It's pretty nice. And one thing that you could do is you can change the speed. If it's too slow for you, um, you can uh, select the clip and press Command R, and you could you can you could speed up the light leak if you want, or slow it down. Maybe you want it a little slower. And if you do slow if you do slow it down because maybe you just want want it slow, then you can just select the clip and then you can blade it at that point. So I've slowed it down here. And what's also cool is that you can add some particle elements to this to to take the shot even further. I'm gonna go into the dust category here, and you've got some subtle dust particles. You can't probably, probably can't see it that well against this black, but like the swirly dust you can see. I think the swirly dust is a little over the top, but what I'm gonna do is just grab this subtle dust and put it over the top here. So I'm gonna select this, press X, select the subtle dust, press Q. So I'm gonna composite the dust on top, and of course I need to add another uh, composite mode. I'm gonna set this again for screen. And now I have these little dust particles kind of like floating through uh, the scene. It just adds a little bit of texture and it's just fantastic. So let's move on to the next clip. In the timeline, I have placed a, what's called a large beam dust. And really what this is, is volumetric light. And there's a number of really cool volumetric light effects. And I think these are great for titles but they're all the same kind of monochromatic color. I'm gonna show you how to change the color and do some really cool stuff with them. So I'm gonna select the clip and I'm gonna press Command-6 to open the color board and I'm going to apply a uh, color curves. And I love color curves because you can manipulate the red, green, and blue channel. For example, I wanna pull out the red at the uh, highlight end of the image, and I'm just gonna pull down. When I pull down this little dot, notice it's um, removing red and it's adding more blue into the highlights. And for the green, well, maybe I'll go the blue channel first. So like for the blue, maybe I wanna push more blue into the midtones of the shadows. So I'm gonna drag this and move it this way. So I'm now adding some blue to that. And let's, tr let's, add, let's add a little green, see what that does. And I can make it more aqua. I can just play with this. I think I like it a little. I think I like it a little on the bluer side there. So maybe I'll just leave it like that. So with just a couple of controls, I was able to completely remap the color of that volumetric light effect. Now I love this effect, uh, particularly with titles. And I've created a 3D title. I'll press V to turn it on, so you can see with the lighting hitting the 3D title just right, you could really make some nice looking uh, 3D. Uh, opening titles. And you can go further with this. I'm gonna, I like this a lot. I mean, you've got this moving, a lot of movement here. So what I'm gonna do is select this, press X, select this, press Q. And what I wanna do is copy the color grade from this clip and paste it on that one. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna select that one, press Command, Shift, V. And I'm gonna paste those color curves right to that one. And then of course, I'm gonna move this one on top. 
And now I have, I have a pretty cool background here with a lot of motion here. One thing I might wanna do is add a composite mode because it's kind of starting to look muddy and I want to I want the black pixels to show through uh, to punch through as transparent for this cl uh, clip down here so I'm going to go back to uh, the main inspector and select the composite mode I'm going to select that to screen and now look at this thing so I've got my title there and I've got um, some moving light to happen that's happening behind the text and uh, it just looks pretty cool all right, so that's what you can do with volumetric light. And on this last clip, I wanna show you what you can do with some of the animated icons and shapes. So I'm gonna go over here to the shapes category and let's see here, there's a bunch of really fun ones in here and um, like I'm, I'm gonna skim over these. You can call attention to things with these. I'm gonna just grab this and drop it right on this clip of these girls here and they're looking at their phone. So. What I want to do is maybe um, move it over a little bit. So I'm going to turn on the transform controls, maybe move this over here. And you can even scale it, okay? You can scale it a little bit there, move it where you want. And uh, looks pretty cool. Now, they're all white. And I want to show you a great effect that you can change the color of these pretty quickly. Uh, any of these that are black and white. So what you want to do is go into the effects browser and go to color and go ahead and grab the colorize effect and drop that on the clip. And why the colorize is important is that you can remap the black and white to a specific color. Now, we know this is a white graphic, so all we need to do is choose our color. I'm gonna choose a nice bright yellow and I'm gonna crank up the intensity. And just like that, I have this nice little graphic that just pops out of the screen. And let's look at another graphic. Let's go into office technology here. Um, let's do something with this phone. This phone kind of animates on and off, little graphic. So I'm gonna bring this down here. I'm gonna just throw that in the timeline. And right now it's too long, but you can completely play with the speed and control how long you want it to hold, how fast you want it to come in, simply by using speed controls. So. Maybe I want it to come in and right there I want it to hold. So I'll press uh, Shift H and I'll add a hold frame. And, and then so the graphic comes on, then it holds, and maybe I want it to speed out. So I'll take this speed segment here and I'll just drag it maybe over here, like something like this, let me move this like that. And so now comes on, holds, and then holds for a certain amount of time and then it goes off really fast. Now, of course, I need to move this over because it's not covering the girl's clip. There we go. So try it again. So it comes on, holds, and then it, I can control how fast it goes off by, by how fast you grab this, make the speed segment here, okay? So if I'm, for example, if I have the hold frame a little longer, I can drag this out, make the hold frame just a little bit longer. So, and then of course, it is a graphic that can be moved. You turn on transforms and I can move this wherever I want on the screen. Maybe it's, maybe it's some sort of a, I don't know, some sort of commercial or whatever, or I need some sort of logo. Um, I can put this wherever I want. And now I have this little animated graphic and then I got my little phone. And as you can see, there's just, there's just tons, tons of animations in here that you can play with. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to know that I have them because um, I know they will come in handy uh, for me because I do a lot of tutorials and particularly these ones, uh, these arrows, I think I, there was a bunch of arrows in here. I can't remember where they were. Let's see, maybe it was under the, yeah, the general category. You've got, you've got a really, a uh, bunch of nice little animated bi-directional arrows, up arrows. You've got some animated clocks. Really, uh, not having to go on the web and search for this or create them yourself, I, I think it's fantastic. So that is my quick rundown on the free Shutterstock Video Toolkit Digital Asset Collection. I hope you enjoy those, and we'll see you this Thursday on the next episode of Ripple Live with Mark and Steve.